as a kid, I've just sort of gone, oh, okay. Um, but once again, you, you block that out, sorry. And <clears throat> You've never spoken about this? Not publicly, no. Um, sorry, I'll just, I'll stop it there. Growing up in Mergen, uh, you know, it was, it was great. We were pretty carefree, just did what we wanted around the town. And we we're one of the, the few Indigenous families in, in the town. I think there was another four others. Uh, we had Sherberg, the Indigenous community next door where my mum grew up. So there'd all, you know, be things around race. And there, was, there were things in, in the local newspaper about it as well. But um, we were very much guarded from it. And mum and dad, I think, did a great job there. Um, and as young kids, we were probably uh, ignorant to what was going on around us. You go back to the early days and you couldn't leave uh, the Sherberg mission, as they called it, uh, without getting permission. And we used to always talk about, you know, being on the fence. And not that I was being on the fence in my attitude, but it was just the two communities that I lived across. It wasn't directed at me, but it was, I was very well aware of it uh, when I came to Brisbane. I signed with the Brisbane Broncos as a 17 year old, so 88 was my first year and there were certain things that players were saying and I was very, as I said, I came there with the EMF Storm, so um, as I was brought up to. Um, but there used to be this uh, uh, saying, it was like a, a, a NBD and I was just thinking, oh, I wonder what that, you know, an acronym, what that acronym means. And um, then I must have asked one of my mates here at the footy club and I can't remember who it was. and. Um, and they said, oh, you don't know what that is? And I said, no. And, and I said, so he told me, and I was, he said, oh, it's nigger boom darky. And I've gone, wow. So as a kid, I've just sort of gone, oh, okay. Um, but once again, you, you block that out. Sorry. And... <clears throat> and the reason why you get a bit emotional, because... It's my club. Sorry, I'll just, I'll stop it there. The reason why that, that does hurt a bit is because in hindsight, you look back and I deflected a lot of that. Um, and we're only kids, remember, and uh, we, we're surrounded by stars and um, it, it was, it was a real wow moment for me, even as a 17, 18 year old thinking, well, oh, that's a bit full on, um, um, that they use code around a racist term, but um, it was crushing um, that um, this was coming out of the mouths of guys that used to watch on TV only a year before. It just showed to me that it has been around for a long time, racism, but you know, it was a different era. It wouldn't have just been happening at our club. Brisbane is not a racist club. Um, it, it was just, you know, a few individuals and uh, I'm sure um, if the upper echelon did know about it at the time, which, as I said, I'm probably just as guilty because I didn't say anything. As a 17-year-old trying to crack rugby league, was it the best thing to go and say something? and just wasn't part of our DNA at the club. I had a bit of a scuffle, I think, in the early 90s, uh, playing North Sydney, and someone called me a, a Black Sea. I was a bit older, I think I was 21. I was a bit bolder. Um, as a rugby league player, so I was a bit, had a lot more confidence, I think, and I just thought, well, I'm in a better position now to actually retaliate, to be honest, and um, I was proud of that because, you know, all it cost me was a penalty for the team. I, I'm thinking, I'd like to think back that we won that game. <laughs> it didn't cost us a game, but, um, you know, I, I got a bit of a talking to about giving the penalty way in attack, but as I said, when I explained what happened, it was like, oh, fair enough. Um, you know, you stood up for you. For your people and, and for what was said, so I, I think uh, there was a re realisation that um, you know there's no room for, for that in, in rugby league. When I'd retired from the Brisbane Broncos, um, I had two years at Wigan. Uh, I think I just went down to buy a, a can of Diet Coke or, or something like that, and I went to the counter um, and asked the lady. As soon as I walked up the counter, she sort of stepped back. I sort of thought to myself, "Oh, here we go." And so she goes over and she slides it over to me and steps back again, and I. I had the money in my hand, so I slid it across to her. And I grabbed the drink, and then she waited for me to go, and she grabbed the money. And I remember my wife, and she goes, what happened just then? Did that just happen? 
And I said, yes. I said, it happens all the time. It's just something that you get used to as a dark-skinned person, and this is 2001, and you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been married uh, since 1990. Um, that my ex-wife really witnessed it firsthand with me, and um, she was taken back. When she had my two youngest sons up in holidays in Noosa, they went to a fishing shop. I think they were 13 and 15 or 16 at the time, and obviously they're dark like I am. Um, my my ex-wife is a, a non-Indigenous Australian with blonde hair, so she walks into the shops with them, and they go off on their own. And uh, the owner pulls the kids up because he thinks they're in there to steal, and doesn't realise my ex-wife is their mum. So she overhears this and goes into bat for the kids and gives the uh, the owner or the manager of the shop a real drilling. Um, so she's witnessed it again with her own kids. Without a doubt, I can tell you that now there is a racism problem in Australia and if I can feel someone has targeted me because of the colour of my skin, I, I get rolled up in within. So for me, then it's just about, just pull it back, Steve. It's about taking that moment to think. There's just that thing, they, the brain goes, oh, well, watch this person. And You know, I've, I've gone in the shops and just said, look, FYI, um, I'm not going to pinch anything, so it's all okay. I keep hearing this, oh, you know, we're going too far with political correct correctness, and that really irks me because, uh, no, we're not. You've got to understand where a lot of stuff that's said or said in the media or names of places or names of products and where they were born from, and go back to where they are born from, they are born out of racism. It's a taught behaviour, and if they just mimic, um, which most kids do, what they see from their parents or their family, uh, they think that's the norm, um, but, it, but it's not. We have to make change now because you think with what's happening, um, you know, with Black Lives Matter and death and custody here in Australia, and it just can't go on. It's just been going on too long. And I think a lot of um, non-Indigenous people who think negative about um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people think, you know, they, they say we're dividing a community. So we're not, we're just trying to get onto you, but we explain to you our history What's happened in the past does affect what does happen today. There's been lads that you know, probably get a bit of racial abuse from the crowd, and that's a shame. But I would like to think that there isn't as blatant as what, when we came through. And uh, the NRL has probably passed the AFL on what has been done with you know, relationships with um, Aboriginal players, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander players, and community. I know rugby league now does do a lot of cultural awareness training um, and they do a lot more in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander space. To see the players like Luttrell and Greg Inglis stand up in the middle of that, that ring during the All-Stars at the start of the match is such a great spectacle and I'm so proud of the impact that you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have had on the game and it's getting stronger and that's the thing, the representation is, is greater than it has been ever and um, all strength to them because uh, in amongst everything that's still happening in the world these boys are holding the flag. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, my dream for them is that we can live in this country and we can live together uh, with, with everyone else. You know, we're all one. Um, we are one country and we don't deny that we're one country and we just want um, people to realise that uh, we're not your enemy, uh, we're all Australians. I'm very proud to be an Aboriginal man. I walk proudly, I, I walk tall, and I, I was always taught that. I've loved what I achieved, I'm, and I'm proud of what I achieved as a person and as a rugby league player, so um, no one could ever take that from me, and I'll keep carrying that to the day I die. <sighs> oh.